Hey guys, welcome uh, back to our second to last pharmacology review. Uh, today our uh, topic is gout. Um, and I always like to do a um, big picture overview for topics. So uh, big picture for gout, uh, really you have to understand what is the problem in gout. So the problem is uh, two things. First thing is hyperuricemia. Um, so a lot of uric acid in the blood causing crystals, uh, and the crystals go and they deposit and they cause inflammation, and the inflammation is mediated by neutrophils. So how we approach this problem is twofold. Uh, we have to treat the acute gout attacks, and then we have to look at the chronic gout. How do we prevent chronic gout from causing an acute gout attack? So the first thing for the first goal for an acute gout attack is to minimize these neutrophils uh, infiltration. And how we do this is by a drug called colchicine, and we'll see exactly how it does that. But colchicine minimizes the neutrophils infiltration. Um, the second thing that we can do is that we can decrease inflammation. So decreasing inflammation is done by two drugs. Uh, so glucocorticoids, famously prednisone, or we can use NSAIDs. And the the most famous one that's used in gout is Um So that's as far as acute gout. So two things, minimize neutrophils and decrease inflammation, colchicine and steroids or NSAIDs. Um, now, uh, we come to uh, chronic gout. So what are our goals for chronic gout? So the first thing in chronic gout that we want to do is that we want to decrease the uric acid production and how we do this by um, two drugs, allopurinol and febroxostat, and we'll see exactly how they decrease the uric acid production. Um, the second thing that we can do is that we can increase the uric acid excretion from the kidneys. The whole point is that we don't want uric acid hanging around in the blood and causing uh, crystals and causing inflammation. So we can uh, either decrease its production or we can increase its excretion. And how we increase its excretion from the kidneys? Uh, by a drug called propenicid. Um, now, let's say we do have a lot of uric acid hanging around and it's starting to form into crystals. We can make these uric acid uh, crystals more soluble by two drugs um, called respiricase and pegloticase. Um, and then lastly, uh, we can avoid um, drugs that cause hyperuricemia. So um, major drugs that cause hyperuricemia and that I want you to be aware of, especially for step one, is um, uh, di uh, loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics. So furosemide and thiazide diuretics, these uh, cause hyperuricemia. Niacin, which is a drug that increases uh, HDL uh, for cholesterol, that also cause hyperuricemia. In addition to other ones, cyclosporin and pyrazinamide. But the biggest, um, biggest three ones that I want you to be aware of is is uh, these three. Also, low dose aspirin. Um, interestingly, low-dose aspirin has been found to uh, cause hyperuricemia because it inhibits uh, uric acid secretion into uh, the urine. So a classic step one question will say um, a patient um, with a history of gout uh, was just started on, um, was diagnosed with heart failure and was just started on uh, a medication. Uh, for the volume overload, um, and uh, now their gout kind of flared up. What medication do you think um, the patient was started on? And the answer would be, uh, for example, furosemide, uh, because furosemide is a loop diuretic. It treats the volume overload and heart failure, and it exacerbates uh, gout. So that's the kind of classic questions that uh, step one examiners will ask you about. So these are this is the big picture for um, for for gout. Now let's get to the nitty gritty details of uh, of these drugs. So the first drugs that we talked about is the inhibitors of uric acid synthesis, so L-purinol and febroxostat. Um, so how these work is that they inhibit xanth xanthine oxidase enzyme. As you remember from the purine salvage pathway, xanthine gets oxidized into uric acid by this enzyme called xanthine oxidase. So these drugs just inhibit xanthine oxidase. So they're used for chronic gout. They're also used for tumor lysis syndrome. And the reason is in tumor lysis, you have a lot of 
uh, purine breakdown. So you have a lot of uric acid buildup. Uh, leach nyhan syndrome, if you remember, you have a deficiency in HGPRT enzyme, and that leads up to increased uric acid. So patients with leach nyhan um, have um, high uric acid, so we give them allopurinol. Um, side effects of allopurinol, the ones that I want you to be extremely aware of is that uh, it causes Steven Johnson syndrome. So Steven Johnson syndrome is this um, extreme dermatological condition where you get uh, skin slouching, um, and allopurinol is famous for Steven Johnson syndrome. Uh, also, can cause hepatotoxicity, aplastic anemia, um, and uh, as you're well uh, of the f well aware of the fact. Um, that uh, drug interaction it inhibits the metabolism of 6 mercaptopurine or azathioprine by inhibit by xanthine oxidase. And the biggest two things that I want you to be aware of allopurinol is the Steven Johnson syndrome and the drug interaction. Faboxostat is a, is a different drug, but it has the same mechanism of action. It's a little bit better tolerated than allopurinol. So that's the inhibitors of uric acid synthesis. Um, next class of agents is the uroco uric agents. Uh, uroco is uric acid uric is just going into the urine. So the this is an agent that makes uric uric acid go into the urine. Probenicid. Um, and how how it does that is that it inhibits urate reabsorption from the proximal convoluted tubule. So if you think about it. Um, the kidney secretes uric acid and tries to absorb it in the proximal convoluted tubule and Provenus goes and says, okay, stop there, you're not going to get reabsorbed, you're going to get thrown away into the urine. Um, Provenicid is used in two uh, uses, and they're actually two different uses, um, but the same idea. The first use is that it's used in chronic gout to, as we've talked about, to increase uric acid uh, excretion into the kidney. The second use is actually not related to gout at all. It's related to patients taking penicillin. And you're going to ask me, how is that? Well, I'll tell you. Let's say I'm giving a patient penicillin, and the dose that I'm giving is not enough to conquer the infection that the patient is getting or to conquer the MIC, uh, the minimum inhib inhibitory concentration for that bug that I'm treating. Um, what I can do is that I can give them probenicid, and probenicid increases the penicillin concentration in the blood. And how it does that is that the body has a way of secreting of um, excreting penicillin by secreting it from the proximal convoluted tubule. It says to penicillin, go through my proximal convoluted tubule and get secreted from there and I'm going to kick you out. Uh, but probenicid actually blocks that secretion and that uh, increases the penicillin concentration in the blood. This is a high yield point for step one because examiners would like you to know um, that association because um, it's kind of like a weird funky association. Um, so that's probenicid. Um, side effect of probenicid is that you can get a uric acid stone. That makes sense because probenicid increases uric acid in the urine. So if you have a lot of uric uh, uric acid in the urine, you're going to increase its concentration and you're going to decrease the solubility. Um, so we tell patients to make sure that they are hydrated to have adequate uh, sol solubility of uric acid in the urine. So probenicid uh, inhibits uric acid uh, reabsorption from PCT, gout, and increased penicillin concentration, and uric acid stones. Also, for patients that are sulfa allergy, uh, we don't recommend using it, but that's a low yield point. Um, next agent is colchicine, and colchicine is really the like you know the bad boy or the 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 big gun for. Uh, for gout, and that's the most famous drug for gout. And the reason for that is that it has a, you know, a, a strange and unique mechanism of action. Um, it binds and stabilizes microtubules. So you know that the neutrophils, they like to travel into sites of the inflammation using micro, microtubules. So it, it stabilizes microtubules and um, that stabilization causes or inhibits the polymerization. So the neutrophils can't go into the site of inflammation. So it decrease the uh, colchicine decreases the neutrophil chemotaxis. Um, colchicine mainly is used for acute gout attacks. However, at low doses, uh, it can be used to prevent uh, gouty attacks. 
Um, side effects for colchicine is diarrhea, and um, the mechanism that is thought uh, that it would be causing diarrhea is that it inhibits sodium potassium ATPase pump in the gut, so the gut can't absorb water. Um, you don't need to know the mechanism, but you need to know that it causes diarrhea, uh, also causes agranulocytosis and myopathy. In rare cases, it can cause hepatic necrosis. Uh, but the biggest thing that I want you to be aware of is the diarrhea and that it stabilizes the microtubules. Um, so that's colchicine. Um, one more point um, for colchicine that I want you to be aware of is that it stabilizes the microtubules. There is a bunch of other drugs, mainly the the taxanes. Uh, they have a little bit of different uh, mechanism of action, but colchicine stabilizes microtubules. Uh, just remember that for your exam. Uh, next drug is endomethacin, and endomethacin is an NSAID. Um, it inhibits COX, pr prostaglandins, and neutrophil migration. It's used for acute gut attack, and just like any other NSAID, it causes GI ulcers and fluid retentions among um, a lot of the other side effects for NSAIDs. Um, so these are uh, colchicine and dumethacin. I also put in the slides agents to increase uric acid degradation. So mainly in the respiricase and pyglodicase. Um, and um, these um, are actually rec re recombinant uricase. So uricase is this enzyme that converts uric acid to a more water-soluble version called allantoin, um, and hence the crystals wouldn't form and then the acute gout attack wouldn't happen. Um, so it's used for refractory chronic gout. So let's say I have a patient on a bunch of medications and they keep getting gout attacks, I can give, give them respiricase. Not for the acute attack, but to prevent an attack, so it's for refractory chronic gout. Um, it's also used to prevent and treat tumor lysis uh, syndrome because um, it converts uric acid to allantoin, which is a water-soluble substance. Um, side effects is anaphylaxis and autoimmune antibodies. The The real high point yield for this is uh, the mechanism of action, that, um, that water-soluble um, metabolite that it's that uric acid is converted to.